I'd like to welcome everyone to my online video classroom with Steph Curry. Everyone knows Steph Curry is one of the best shooters of all time. What I want to do today is I want to break down his whole offensive game. From how he just gets his catch and shoot game going, to his pick and rolls, to his finishing, to how he sets up defenders, and how he gets in the pain at will. I think the two things that you're going to really be impressed with, and at least I was when I was breaking down the film, was his ability to move without the ball and just continuously move to make himself hard to God. And when in he's probably one of the top two finishers playing in the game today. His ability to finish with right hand, left hand, reverse layups, floaters. It was, it was really impressive to watch, it, it, clip after clip. So sit back and relax. Let's have some fun. Let's go to work. As everyone knows, Steph has unlimited range in his shot. It just opens up everything to be able to make shots from distance like he does because now defenders got to run out at him. What makes him so difficult to defend is besides making shots and getting his feet set, he just continuously moves around the court from side to side, making a play, a pass, and then coming off a pin down on the other side or respacing the defense. What I want you to notice on his spot-ups, I want to... I want you to notice his ability to get his shot off quickly, his shot prep before the, the ball even gets to his hands. We talked about how he just continuously moves and how being able to shoot the ball and stretch the defense where they got to close out to him long, he could open up and just drive and open up his drive game as well. These are things that fundamentally every point guard has got to be able to learn how to play without the ball in his hands. Let's sit back, let's relax, and let's go to work. With Curry being one of the best shooters of all time, it opens up so many opportunities for him, not only to catch and shoot on the perimeter, but also to drive it and just make plays, you know, taking the ball off the dribble. Most of these plays aren't just going to be him catching and shooting, spotting up, where you know, he's just sort of waiting on the ball. He does a tremendous job, and you'll see it in multiple videos of just moving without the ball and being able to stretch the floor and just continue to try to make plays but then be hard to guard and be able to space out and sprint to a spot on the floor or coming off a pin down. I want you to really focus in on quick release, quick shot, getting his feet set, but also always being on the move. So this is going to be mostly just him making plays and then re-spacing to get, to get shots off in the perimeter. Let's check it out and let's go to work. So again, plays the long game here, waits for a while, but doesn't have really have much going on on the, on the one side and just sort of goes through to the next. Corner three, gets his feet set quick, catch and shoot. Same thing, just an easy play. I mean, I, th I think I'd do this with every point guard, especially if they can make shots like the, you know at a decent rate. Being able just to pass the ball and then sprint quick to the corner. I mean, defense defenders aren't really used to guarding people who, who move this much. And driving kick, sprint to the other side, three. That's a tough, I mean, that's tough to defend. I mean, drives it, pass just to an open spot. You just got to keep moving, moving, moving. Just make yourself tough to defend. And hits Pachulia rolling and just sort of spaces and then relocates, gets in, the, in Thompson's vision, catch and shoot. And he, screen off the ball just I think the more you can do off the ball it just to occupy people and just keep everything moving 
I mean, that's great. Sets a screen for Durant here. Respaces Durant. You know, Durant forces two on the ball right here. And then just, made, you know, Curry now is open for the shot. Or the drive if he wanted to. I mean, damn, you got to be in good shape. I mean, look. Makes the pass, cuts through, all the way to the other side. Sets a little screen there, and then relocates to the corner. No, no contest. That's an easy shot. For him, of course. I mean, they force a switch here. Makes his play with, with, on Jordan. You know, combo move. Gets to the paint. Dumps it off. Should have probably been a finish. Relocates. Good shot. I mean, off that pick and roll, just continues to move. I mean, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. It spaces the floor. Now this is where it opens up the drives to the basket. Anytime you can shoot, and you know, obviously it spaces the floor and puts more pressure on the defense. So here he drives Adams, kicks, and you know, forces Adams. Now his balance is going where? It's going forward. So anytime a defender's closing you long, especially a big man like this, you just use the fake and then drive it to the rim. Same thing now, does dribble pull up. I mean, again, anytime you can make those shots and then use that defender's balance against them. And anytime you can make those shots on the perimeter, and now you just add to your game to be able to either one dribble, two dribble, pull up, or get to the basket or a floater. I mean, these are just shots that you have to put in your arsenal. So we covered a lot of things, but I think the simple sort of point that I'm trying to make on this is the catch and shoot's important, getting your feet set, doing your shot prep, but being able to continuously move all over the floor to make yourself hard to God. We're going to go over cuts later, but just how hard in pick and rolls especially as well, but how hard he is to defend not only just to shoot and to drive it, but drive, kick, re-space, and just play with the defense there. Today's game is constantly getting quicker. Transition is such an important part of that because you want to try to get as many easy baskets as you can. You want to speed not only your offense up, but you want to speed the defense up and get you as many good looks and high percentage and efficient offensive baskets that a team can get. So when you're talking about transition and, and Steph's game in transition, you got to understand his ability to attack the floor. He wants to attack the paint. He loves changing speeds, but when he, when he changes direction or he makes his drive, he always changes his speed. He always sets him up slow, finishes the defender fast, and you got to just pick up on that. Not only the ability to have the ball in your hands and score, but also be off the ball. Run your lanes. Run to a spot. Run the lane all the way to the rim and do different things. Be able to attack attack with the ball in your hand, attack while you're running a lane and getting a look-ahead pass and then attacking there. And just, you know, being able to score in transition just confuses the defense because they don't communicate well. There's a lot of cross-matching and there's a great opportunity for you to get consistent great shots by using the defense's lack of balance against them. So let's look at the film and let's go to work. So we're going to cover transition. I want you to just really focus in on Steph's ability to change speeds on his drives, sprint the floor off the ball to be able to shoot the three or drive it or get to the basket, you know, on just the cutting of the rim and running his lane. But in transition, just being in a hurry as far as getting up the floor and then setting up. But attack the defense. This is when they're most vulnerable. This is when communication's a problem. So just watch the easy plays that he could create by changing speeds, getting in the paint, and attacking, and attacking the defense on or off the ball. So I want you to you know, just watch the change of speeds as he changes speeds and changes directions as he gets lower. 
sprints that change speed, change direction. Gets his man on his hip, finish. Now he's off the ball. Obviously being able to shoot the ball, and, and now they're going to come at him crazy like this. But again, changing speed, fast to slow to fast again. And now we're getting to the finish. And transition off the ball, catch and shoot, left, right, right into your three. Off the ball, just running the lane. I mean, nothing simple. I mean, nothing really difficult there, but just run in the lane. I and mean, if you don't have the ball, just run to a spot. He can go all the way to the rim here. But again, run in the floor. If you don't have the ball in your hand, it doesn't matter. Just keep running. Now, when you're off the ball in transition and the defense is trying to stop the ball, so everybody's fixated where? Fixated on the ball. So now he just comes to the ball. And now everybody's still trying to, like, get communicated, get settled. And he just sort of just continues to go to the basket and attacks. Great finish, left hand, left side. And in transition, sprinting to a spot. Catch and shoot. Quick movements. You know, again, this is where they're at their weakest. So anytime you get attack like this... Everyone's backing up, makes a quick right to, uh, left to right, and that little scoop shot going in the middle. Nothing fancy there, just a, just a three in transition. I mean, there are a lot of ways you can get the ball in transition and score as a point guard. A lot of times you're going to have the ball in your hands, but when you don't, being able to know where to go, where to sprint to on the floor, spots, get to the paint, uh, if you have the ball in your hands, trying to attack the basket, attack the rim, change speeds, change direction, be able to make a play. Pull up, get to the rim, however you're going to do it. Just be, you know, just have force behind you. Always be attacking. Always understand and transition. D defenders are going to be at their weakest. They're going to have to communicate and cross match, and you've got to take advantage of that. Being able to play both on and off the ball for a point guard just makes you that much more valuable. If you could score, if you could set your teammates up, but then you could also get off the ball and do some other things for your team. Talk about using screens and pin downs. The most important thing, and, and we'll just go through a checklist of anything that you should be you know, looking out for to be a really good player coming off screens. First things first, you got to set your man up. You got to set your defender up, take them away from the screen and then sprint back off the screen to get them clipped off that screen. You always want to force them into either some type of contact or having them veer on long angles, giving you the inside edge when, when you're trying to you know, get open coming off a pin down. You have to change your speeds. Don't come off one speed. Set them up slow. Come, you know, finish them fast. you got to read your defender. you got to read your defender. you got to read your screener's defender and seeing how they're defending the pin down. All right, is the, are they going to lock and trail? Are they going to shoot the gap? How is your man going to defend you? Then how's the screener's man defending? Are they staying connected consistently when you're coming off that screen? Are they staying connected to the screener, but uh, the man they're guarding, but yet trying to bump you off your course? So you got to know how to that you're being defended because that could impact you either taking a shot or making a play for somebody else. Then obviously getting a great shot. Anytime, any play, any set that you run, you want to get a great shot. So make sure that you're getting a, a steady diet of consistent open shots or, you know, if they're going to hedge up on you, you know, coming off the pin down, be able to set p other people up. Let's sit back. Let's get, let's get the film going. Let's go to work. Steph's so good at moving up the ball. Um, being able to set his man up, blasting off screens, changing speeds when he comes off screens. But I want you to watch and really focus in on his ability to make a play for somebody pass the ball and then sprint off screens either other side of the floor or he's continuously moving so 
and coming off screens, they do a lot of they do a lot of um, split action when they enter the ball in the post. So a lot of a lot of the pin downs he'll get is not the traditional pin down where he's coming from the paint out. He'll he'll you know come off screens from the perimeter, you know as they set screens for each other when they enter the ball in the post. So let's take a look at it again. Focus in on his ability to get the shot off quickly. Change speeds coming off that screen and never stop moving when he gives the ball up, making a play for somebody. There's always a screen to come off of on the other side. Let's go to work. And makes the pass, comes off the screen, comes off the screen on the other side. That's a lot of movement. He covers a lot of ground consistently. And it comes off the stagger there. Catch and shoot. Now we're talking about that split action. Green gets him off the ball right there, inside foot. He'll hop a lot, but again, this is uh, the split action is a great action to run because there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of screening, there's a lot of cutting. And as, again, as you see it there, it sets his man up below, he gets his man below the screen here. And then comes off green screen right there. His man's forced to trail. And then gets the three-point shot. You notice as he changes the speeds, you know, just sets him up and then blasts off that thing. Sets his feet. Cuts, doesn't get it, and comes off that screen firing. I mean, these are tough shots. Don't go, no, you know, there's no doubt about it. Obviously, you want to shoot in your range and the shots that you can make, but just watch the movement. I mean, first you get a cut off the ball from the post, cut, nothing, and then doesn't quit on it. Just comes off the screen on the other side, catch and shoot. I mean, he just never stops moving. I mean, that's a hell of a shot, but watch how quickly he gets it off. I mean, he comes down, a little flare action from Iguodala, and that's a quick shot, quick release. It never stops. A little pin, quick shot, never stops moving. As you can see, it just it, it's it just helps you to become a good cutter off the ball, and then just continue to move coming off screens. Here we just have him have him coming off. Now he can come off either. You know, obviously he won't really go away from the ball. There, there's not really much of a play, but he can go either side. He can just go to the other side again. You know where Thompson's at. But now he comes off Pachulia, and then ready to shoot, gets his feet set. As you can see, it wasn't inside foot. It was just getting you know getting a hop into a shot. And comes off the pick and roll, pass, just continues to wait for it, comes off that, and then drives his man all the way to the rim. Little handoff, drives it, makes a play, and then comes off the other side. It just, it's just, he's such a tough player to guard because he could score in almost any way, but, I mean, being able to shoot the way he does plus moving, that's tough. So again, makes the play, comes off a pin, ready to shoot. I mean, you just got to play off the defense, but you got to be able to set your man up. You got to continuously move all over the floor. Whenever you make a play for someone, space out to the other side, cut and there's always a pin down to come off of i think the best players are the ones that could really move well without the ball because it just sets up so many opportunities especially when you're going to catch and attack the defense as coaches we're always trying to find ways for our players to get easy baskets you have to try to take pressure off yourself as an offensive player where you're not try just trying to make shots all the time trying to get easy shots or easy looks to get you know, either finishes at the basket or open jump shots are what we're trying to do. With Steph, his 
just constant movement makes him one of the toughest players in NBA history to defend. You'll see how he just he's in space, he's patient, he you know, he reads his defender, wants his defender, you know, and, and they all do it. You'll see it in the film, takes his eyes off him for a half second to look at the ball when he's off the ball and just takes that opportunity to cut. You have to just reinvent ways to get open looks going towards the basket. And then when you get the, the ball going towards the basket, you got to be a great finisher. And as you're going to see here with all his reverse layups and, you know, floaters and different types of shots that he could finish with. But his cutting is, is fantastic. And let's take a look. Now here's a simple cut that's real, real easy to use. From half, just hits Zaza Pachulia up top and just cut, just follows the pass, sets his man up, and the cut behind. And that's a simple, simple cut that any player could use, very easy to teach. Played the long game here for sure, just waited on it. But again, just spacing out. Just go, you know, everything's, everything's fixated on the ball. You're going to see this a lot where you see Ariza here. You see his vision. Once that vision's taken away, you should t use that to your advantage. All right. Zaza gets it, turns his head, back cut. I mean, so much out of that split action. You know, just got to keep moving. Ball's entered to the post. One of these guys up top is going to set a screen. Now it's going to be Steph. But they, they sort of play it. Houston doesn't play it the right way. Sort of just expects that screen to be set. And he just cuts to the basket. And he also has Iguodala right here who could space out behind the three or cut like he just did. So there are options by just continuing to move and attack the defense. There should be more with point guards, you know, having the mentality to move just like Steph does off the ball. It's just so much tougher to, to defend. Not a, lot of, not a lot of players like defending these cuts. You know, everyone's used to just defending people who don't really like to move without the ball. Look how easy it is to generate offense by just getting just easy cuts, following your pass, and just passing and cutting to the basket. And be able to finish is, is important. Be able to use those reverse layups, the right hand, the left hand on the right side, right hand, left hand on the left side, and just be able to you know cut at any moment and be able to have to finish in the pain. He's an unbelievable finisher. I think two things you're going to see out of this film is how well he moves without the ball and how, how good of a finisher that he is. Just back cuts Bradley there with a reverse layup with the left hand. Here they just keep, you know, the, just Phoenix is asleep. Passes here right from the top. And again, not really, not really having anyone in position to stop him. Uh, you know, Peyton's there behind him, just makes that cut. This is just persistence on the cut, just continues to try to, you know, find ways to cut to the basket and score. Tries to flash, Dunn beats him, goes around, and just backdoor, good pass by Pachulia. Just like anything else, defense overplays, and then you just go the other way. I mean, look how much movement he has on this. Makes the pass, cuts to the other side, comes off the pins. They overplay, top lock, and just goes the other way. You're always going to catch guys sleeping. You're always going to do it off the ball. All right? Here Kyrie sees Steph. Now right there, 
Right, he keeps on, you know, keeps on turning his head. A little push off, didn't hurt anybody, but just continuously to be aggressive, just continue to be aggressive by trying to cut. And the most common cuts are off the, you know, the post entry. Here, Powell's got him, you know, a cross match on the perimeter. Just sets him up, sets that screen right here for Durant, and then just comes around Durant, a little push off on Powell, push, pushes Powell off a little bit, but still just aggressive trying to find his way. And you just see it. it it's not difficult. You have to you be creative. You play in space. You, keep, you, you get your defender sleeping, and you cut, and you're aggressive with your cuts, and you, you work on your finishing, and just work on these things that can just – help your team and take pressure off you as an offensive player by being able to cut to the basket and getting these open looks. The goal for any good point guard is to be able to live in the paint. I don't care if it's off drives, pick and rolls, cuts, transition. You got to find a way to get in the paint. And when you do this, obviously the one thing you have to be able to do besides make plays for other players is be able to finish. Steph's finish package is one of the best I've ever seen. Can finish right hand, left hand on the right side, right hand, left hand on the left side, reverse layups, floaters. He's got that scoop shot under the, un, you know, put the hand under the ball like he does in this picture. He can score on reverse layups. But we're doing all this work to move without the ball and cut and drive and change your speeds. You got to be able to finish. And I think you'll be able to pick up a lot of things from his finishing packages that. It just simple finishes, but just something you have to work on constantly. But you have to be a highly efficient player when you get the ball in the paint. It's like getting the ball in the red zone in football. You, ha you have to convert. You have to convert. And let's just watch the tape and, and see him finish. All right, let's go to work. I promised myself I wouldn't over talk, especially in the beginning of these videos. But the things that I want you to really key in on Steph, and, and Steph's, be, you know, him and Kyrie Irving are probably the top two point guard finishers that are in the league. Uh, what I want you to uh, really key in on is his, you know, Steph's ability to use the glass, especially high off the board, the control that he has, the underhand scoop, which is phenomenal shot that he just mastered over the years, his ability to use his left hand, and his ability to shoot reverse layups on either side. So just let's just watch the tape and let's go to work. Right hand on the left side. That's the shot I'm talking about. Being able to scoop it and get that ball straight up in the air to have great, you know, a soft touch on the ball and just has con so much control of the ball, right or left-handed. I mean, a left-handed scoop is tough. Here he's going to use the scoop shot again. Drives Mejri, scoops it up. I and mean, especially getting the ball straight up like that, that's a hell of a shot. Left hand reverse, like we're talking about, high on the board. Just extending up, getting the ball high on the board and finishing. Being able to use the board and get high on the board is a very, very great skill to have at any position as a finisher. There's that scoop. Just to control the ball, especially to be able to scoop the ball under the ball and finish with your left hand, it's, a great, it, it's just a great shot. So that over, under, over, I mean, that's a, again, finishing is such a feel game kind of, kind of thing. And he's just got tremendous feel around the basket, especially in the paint. Just scoops it up off the glass. Pretty finished. Nothing fancy there, just his ability to use the left hand, though. I mean, again, offhand, weak hand, 
is a skill that every point guard, any any position really needs to be able to do. Left hand, soft finish, you know, using the glass. I mean, just controlling the ball and and just having just having the ability to do that, and you know that's why finishing is such an important skill. You know, be able to just keep the ball in your right hand and scoop it up off the glass. Here's the last one. Reverse layup. Just being able to finish different ways, different angles, both hands, using the glass, not using the glass. I mean, he just has an array of moves that he can go to. And that's, see, by the film, you, you understand how important finishing is at any position, but especially the point guard spot. You're going to have to live in the paint as a, gr- a great point guard. And Steph can not only shoot the, the three ball, score in the pick and roll, but also get in that paint and be an effective and efficient finisher. It's an important skill. It's an important trait. Any player has to work on it, and every coach has to teach the players how to do it. Point guards come in all, all types of shapes and sizes these days. Most of them are scorers. Very few are just pass-first point guards. But you still have to be able to have the, the fundamental skill of being an accurate passer, being able to pass the ball with both hands, being able to get the ball on target to whoever you're giving it to. We talked about point guards getting in the paint, drawing, you know, drawing multiple defenders on the ball. When you can continuously do this and, and just do it consistently, be able to draw two on the ball and make a play for someone else. I don't care if you're a pass-first point guard or not. Whenever you see two defenders on you, you got to be able to make a play for someone else. So watch Steph and his ability to draw two and then just make plays for everyone could be spotted up in the perimeter, could be cutting, could be drop-offs to bigs, but very accurate, can you know pass with both hands. And it's a winning trait, and it's just something that's contagious that all winning teams do, they could pass the ball. And I think as a point guard, even if you're just working on your situations on pick and rolls and game situations, being able to pass the ball when you, they, when you force two on the ball could just increase your value, and, your, and just a, it's a winning mindset. Being able to pass at any position is important. We'll cover some pick and roll reads on the pick and roll session, but these passes I'm gonna, we're going to go over today in this session is transition passing, dribble kick passing, drawing two in the ball, either coming off the screen, coming off pin downs, or just drawing two in general and being able to make a play for someone else. I think as a point guard, even if you're playing on or off the ball, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of situations where you can get in the paint and draw two on the ball and make a play for someone else. So let's go over some of these reads, and let's go to work. Here, simple transition. Just take the pressure off the offense and put the pressure on the defense by pushing it and looking for someone in transition. Here he has Durant a little bit further away from the basket, but he saw he had a lane to the basket. I don't care that he's, you know, he's an unbelievable athlete. This is just a proper read to make. Push it. Don't hold the ball too long. I put the pressure on the defense. You get somebody just with a full head of steam running a lane. You got to give it to him. Here he's going to come off a pin. All right, he's not going to draw two, but he's going to engage as he comes off. He's going to have his man trailing. McConnell trails, and he, and he engages Saric enough to be able to make the play to green go into the basket. I guess technically this is a pick and roll, but I mean, it's so quick. It happens so quickly. But again, being able to just keep moving, coming off. All right. Now he engages the big, and now he's got Looney just rolling to the rim. We talk about it all the time. Just draw two on the ball. When you draw two on the ball, just like this. Right, all right. When he draws two, he just you just have to make a play to the next guy. And on this play anyway, these two guys they should be pulled over a little bit, especially you know you don't have great options on the weak side right now, 
and be able to at least put, get, you know give their men a little bit of help, especially on plays like this. Simple read. Minnesota reject, you know, forcing the reject. And as, on the reject, you get the rotation coming up, and then you have your pick of players that are open on the weak side. Same thing, Washington just too high, a little confused in the weak side. I mean, and sort of just confused in general and just has a wide open player under the basket. I don't think he even knew how wide open he was. Here just makes the extra pass. I mean, these are great plays. I mean, even though they're just simple plays and not really read reads, but again, sees that his man's wide. He's got Thompson wide open. He could take the shot as well. But just you know, spaces the floor even that much more and makes him that much tougher to guard. Thompson open shot, count it. Just attacks Harden as any player would, and just now with the now now Houston's just forced to scramble. All right, he sees multiple players on the ball here. He's got you know he's got three players, one two, three, and just makes the easy play to the corner. So you see all these situations that come up. I mean, there's probably a million more that we haven't covered, but being able to draw two on the ball, be aggressive, and be able to make plays for other people when you force the defense to step up. So the passing part, continue to make reads. You see how important it is for, for a winning player and a winning team to have players like that that can make passes. Screen and roll is the lifeblood of any point guard or combo guard. You're going to have to have a plan of attack. It's a very complicated thing, but you just have to sort of get through the night with simple principles. First off, how do you set your man up? Second of all, what defensive coverage is, is your opponent in? How are they guarding you? How are they defending you on that screen? How's the screener's man defending you? Are they doubling the ball? Is it big in the drop? So you have to read not only how you set your man up to either get a hit on that screen or a wide angle to give you an advantage, but you also got to read the screener's man and how they're defending. So you're going to have to just sort of you're going to have to navigate through that and you have to just sort of learn what's a good shot, how do you set your opponents up, how do you get two on the ball and just continue to set your uh, set your opponents up. I mean, set your teammate up and be able to just sort of get efficient shots and the best shots that you could possibly get. Pick and roll game is something that it takes a long time, a lot of mistakes, a lot of trial by error. So, I mean, you're going to see a lot of good footage here of, him, uh, of Steph making plays. Now, the one thing about Steph is because of his shooting range, Golden State sets a lot of his ball screens way past the three because they want him pulling up from three instead of the long two or the mid-range two. So you're going to have to calibrate your shot and adjust your shot compared to his. You know, If your range isn't three-point Wayne and it's mid-range, just sort of adjust that. If it's three-point range, then that's great. So um, not only does he score on these, but obviously he, he, makes look, he gets looks to his teammates. So let's roll the film. Let's go to work. Screen and roll is one of the biggest parts of our game today. And it's a very complicated thing sometimes, especially for young point guards. So with, with pick and roll, I try to simplify it the, the best that I can. When I coach point guards and I talk to them about it, the young ones, I tell them, first things first, you got to set your man up. You got to play the two-man game with the, with the screener and yourself. You got to see how your the player that's guarding you how they're going to defend it. What are, you know how how's your man going to defend it? How good of a job you can set your man up coming out into that screen, and then how is the screener's man playing? Is he playing up, where you know where you can beat try to beat him or split him? Is he playing back where you can shoot the you know shoot the jump shot and have that patch of space where you could jump you know, shoot the ball? Are they going to double you right away where you have to give you know, your big the ball rolling or popping on an early roll? And then what, what's going to happen with the read on the other three players? So, again, there's a million ways to do it, but I think it's the best way to do that. Just set your man up first, 
see it, see how the screeners man is playing and then make the read. Do you have a shot? Can you give it to somebody else? And, and, and those are the things, especially making mistakes early in your career to be able to just sort of coach it through and just sort of make those mistakes and learn from them. All right, so let's roll the tape and let's go to work. So here we talked about it. Get your man to either get clipped or get hit. All right. Shorter sort of dies on that screen. And then Collins here is going just playing back, very limited, really contesting the ball, and just easy pull up. And Carmelo makes a stab at it. He does a good job to get, you know, Westbrook on that wide angle. And then just easy, easy pull up. Here, same thing. He's gonna get in the mid range. You know, Pachulia just wallops that. You know, the Bulls defender. You know, Dunn sort of pulled all the way over, but you know, Lopez, you know, doesn't really contest and has that elbow jump shot wide open. So again, if you're facing a big that's gonna do stuff like this, like Embiid right here, Embiid's all the way in the paint, no contest. Look at all the space that he has. Of course, you got to take the jump shot. There's really not, I mean, you got no other choice. There's really nobody guarding you. I mean, that's a, just an easy read. All right, so now the big thing about him is obviously he's one of the best shooters of all time. So they want to set him up for mostly three point shots. So they're going to set their screens further away from the basket. So what happens is it's it's harder for the the big to defend it because they don't want to play way far away from the basket. Now now it's going to, it's going to be drive city from the point guard. So a lot of times these bigs are way back, and it opens up all this space. Look at the space here, and then you could just you shoot the three. That's what they set up a lot of these. Uh, you know, for the next seven or eight pick and rolls, they're going to just be three point shots. So Horford's back, late challenge by. Irving, but it doesn't really matter. So again, they're gonna set that screen way far out, and then they're just gonna he's just gonna make the read on how the big's playing. If he plays down, if he plays back like this, he's gonna take the three. If the big comes up, now he could drive it. It just it's that much of an advantage to be able to do that. Here, Dirk's gotta come from all the way down, all the way back to try to contest. That's a, just a tough rotation for a big to make, especially when you can't really get to spots that quickly. Here he steps back on Cousins. Well, that's just another read. Comes off the screen, gets him on his hip, steps back on that right foot, off the, you know, going left. Does a good job getting a hit on that screen. Comes across and just shoots the ball. Just just an open look. I mean, he could obviously make any type of shot he wants, but anytime you have space, again, do your job right there. It gets hit. So now that puts a, a you know, we'll cover the, the roll and hitting the roll man in a minute. But whenever you crack a man like that, and then you have the big right here, you have Brown here, he's got to make a decision because he's got to keep Curry in front of him. But also, he can't let Durant get behind him. So he gets cracked, and then that space, that much space is to shoot the three. So again, they're that far out. And look at, look at where the defender is defending Zaza. He's right here. So all he needs to do is be able to set up Schroeder on that screen. He's going to have an open three. So now when you have a full head of steam, especially if they set a screen this deep out, and then you see where Davis is coming, his sort of weight's going forward because he's sort of skipping up. And then once that happens and you see that defender going forward, that's when you just sort of now play one-on-one -on -one with the big and then get to the basket and with the floor wide open. Same thing, Capella plays up. He's not dropping back because he doesn't want to give up the three. And he's sort of all sort of discombobulated on his balance. 
So now Curry just comes off and just gives him that change of direction and gets to the basket. Talking about changing speeds, getting in that paint. And as he comes off, he does a great job with just changing speeds here, playing with two speeds. So it keeps Capella on his toes and then gets in front and then just has that finish. It's so important to be a great finisher. So again, he rejects it. They sort of play him away from the screen, so he rejects it to his right. Chan was backing up a little bit, just shoots that floater going to, you know, going to the baseline. Same thing, especially on step up. So when they ice it or blew it, where they're forcing you up, see how they for now they're forcing the baseline. As he does this, now he's playing one on one with Plumley, and he just, you know, Plumley's backing up a little bit. And then just opens up that pocket of space right there to shoot that floater. So anytime you can engage too. Does a good job. Jack sort of takes that long step. You see that hold by Jack. And now it's now he's got the big that has to sort of keep Curry in front. And then not let Looney in back. And this is what happens when you let your play, you, you, the big sort of get ahead of steam in the roll. He engages two here. And then just Looney rolls to the basket. Early roll. And then finish at the, at the rim. Whenever they engage two on a blitz or a double coming off that pick and roll, you got to give it up early. So here they space out. Young sort of gets a you know, decent space on it. They engage two, and then he just makes the quick pass, and that's a long rotation to make. So whenever you see two on the ball, so he does a good job that you know screen by Looney. He sort of changes direction to get to get everybody on the left side. So that, you now it comes back, and then they just engage. You know, engages two here. And now he's got green open for three. You always, as a good point guy, want to engage two to be able to make a play for somebody else. See, on the reject, when you go hard to the basket like this, rejects it, everybody's playing over. All right, everyone's playing over. I don't know why they were playing over like this when they were gonna when they were gonna take away, you know, take away his left. I thought everybody would be shifting over to Curry's right. But now he's got that clear path, and once that happens, and now you got a you know full head of steam going to the basket. Somebody's gonna have to rotate up, and now as they rotate up, you see you got three players on the ball right here. Now it's just an easy dump down to Caspi. So again, whenever they jump the ball like that, whenever they put two two right here on the ball quick, you just give it up quick. And let the and let the early roll man just just do his thing. It's really good to freeze the defense coming off that screen. The bigs here, you got Jokic here. He just sort of plays with Jokic enough time to keep him occupied. The floor space did a good job with that, and it just has enough time now for the for Green to roll to the basket, get him occupied, and make the play. Again, it's pretty easy. Whenever you get two on the ball like this, so he's got you know he's got two on the ball. They're not really doing much to shadow the ball or try to get a deflection. He just makes the pass, the early roll. Somebody from the weak side here, one of these two, especially up top, needs to be in position to bump Pachulia. Now it's just sort of it's just an easy play because no one's bumping. You got two on the ball, and it's just an easy play. So we we looked a lot of, a lot of reads in the pick and roll. We talked about it. Get your man set up. See how the defense is playing it. See how the bigs playing, the screeners man's playing it. If they're playing up, you drive it. They're playing back. You have a three-point shot. You know, use the roll man to be able to suck other defenders in to be able to, you know, hit players in the perimeter, spot it up, or get into the paint, force the defense to rotate up and drop it off to your bigs. There's a lot of options. I I really like when young players can make mistakes because now they know 
you know, hopefully next time they're learning about reads and what, what, you know, when to shoot, when to pass, how to read defenses. And it's just, it's just one of those things you got to continuously work on. A lot of times point guards find themselves switched on or a big man switched on to them on pick and roll, especially if the opponents switch a lot on their defensive coverage. You're going to have to, even in that situation or a situation where you just have the ball on the perimeter, at some point the coach is going to call you a number to be able to create offense, to create space, to get a shot. It's always important to sort of have a different array of moves to be able to do that. Steph, in the, in the film you're going to see, getting to the basket, he, he likes to use the combination moves, be able to get his defender off balance, and be able to get in the paint. When he gets in the paint, be, even before he makes his drive, you got to notice how low he gets. You know, I want you to focus in on the change of speeds, but being able to you know create space to get that you know go, go into the rim, being able to go off the ball and use his jabs and his step backs to his advantage, and just being able to get his defender off balance and create that space. So let's roll the film and uh, let's go to work. Thanks. Steph could beat you in a variety of ways. On the ball, off the ball. Obviously, he has the ball in his hand most of the time. He'll find himself, you know, facing switching on pick and rolls where he has to isolate. He has to try to create space. He'll either do it with combo moves because he's such a great ball handler and just watch his ability to get separation off the dribble, being able to change speed, change pace, using great angles. And then off the ball, being able to use jabs and step backs and just little sort of tricks of the trade to get, you know, to create space. So let's take a look and let's go to work. No real trickery there. Just, you know, just change the speed, change the direction, change speed, get slow. Gets, you know, just gets him on his hip and finishes at the, at the rim. Yeah, nothing, nothing really fancy here. Just between the legs, changes direction, changes speeds, and gets to the rim. Just aggressive, getting to the basket, going full speed. Another combo move to a floater. But again, just real quick. Doesn't waste any time. Speed just, just goes hard. And any time, you know, now now he's off the ball. Uses that little jab, gets close, gets his defender close, and just attacks him. Gets nice and low, attacks, creates contact, gets to the basket. Here's that step back we're talking about. Again, that first step going towards the rim. You know, Gallinari thinks he's going to the basket, and he just uses that step back to create separation. Using those big steps, getting to the basket, just changing direction, changing speed, staying low, getting his man on his hip, and obviously being able to finish. Here's a switch. Dorian Finney-Smith you know, gets on him, uses that jab, step back. That one step, step back going left. Here he takes Bogdanovich into the, into the, you know, into the mid-range. Same thing, just squares him up, uses that jab, attacks, Steps back on his right foot going left. Talked about that scoop shot before. And again, just trying to get in the paint, trying to beat the man. And then when the help comes to be able to get the shot off. So he get, gets his man on his hip. He sees the help coming there. So it was obviously he's going towards the rim before the help gets there. Gets up. Now that help should have rotated up. And as he beats, he probably should have rotated it up. But then, you know, he probably could have made a play for somebody else. But, you know, just trying to play off the defense, trying to you know, be aggressive in attack and just be in attack mode and, and being able to finish in the paint. Yeah, never stops moving, this kid. One of the best off the ball movers I've ever seen. Same thing, just drives it to a step back. Gets his defender going back, steps back going left off his right foot, and there you have it. Look, you're going to face isolations, especially with as much switching as we see today in today's game. you got to be able to make moves and, and have something in your bag to be able to create space. So you need to be able to you know, change speed, change direction, get to the basket, finish. 
either hand. We already talked about finishing, being able to use your step backs, use your jab steps, and be able to clear your defender to try to get a shot off. You know, at that point guard position, you're going to have to be able to do something when your coach calls your number to be able to create a spot, create a shot when you need to. Now, I know we covered finishing already, and floater obviously is a finishing move, but I felt as though I wanted to separate it because Steph's floater is very good, and I wanted to isolate it by itself and talk about the floater a little bit, especially with point guards. Look, it's a point, it's a shot that either you know coaches love or hate. I think it's a necessity, especially when you're trying to get in the paint and scoring and trying to finish over bigger players. I think the floater is a great shot if it's practiced well, but you need to plan with it. What situations are going to use it? What foot you're going to try to go off of? And you know, just sort of you know when you're going to release it. So that's having a plan. Trajectory of the shot, you know, just like a jump shot. If you're a great shooter like Steph. You know, the, the floater is basically a one-handed shot. So if you're a great shooter and you have a lot of confidence having that low, fast trajectory in your, on your floater, it's fine. The problem is if you don't shoot that perfect floater and it's just not going to be a swish and it's going to, you know, just like a jump shot, right? If it's not going to be a perfect shot, you want it to have a sort of more air under it. You want it to get straighter, higher, to get a lot of touch around the basket. So I think it's important to watch the situations in which he uses the shot and, you know, the trajectory and some of the things that he uses. Again, not everybody's floater is going to be the same, but just understanding where he gets it off of, you know, the touch that he uses, where his hand placement is, all those things are important in shooting the great floater. So let's, uh, let's take a look. i got a few clips, and we'll go to work. All right, thank you. Now, I know I already covered finishing, and the floater is obviously finished, but I want you to sort of concentrate on in the situations in which he uses the floater on pick and rolls and just the regular plays, also the trajectory he uses and just the skill that he has on that shot. He just doesn't throw it up to throw it. He has a plan of attack and just one of the better floater shooters at, you know, at any position in the game. So let's roll the tape and let's go to work. See how he just lofts it up? I mean, I, I like the straight up, you know, getting the ball a little higher and straighter, but he still has a nice touch and a floater, you know, float on the shot to get some air under the ball to be able to give him some touches when it hits the rim if it's not a perfect shot. Shoots it on the split, on the pick and roll. I mean, again, that's a, that's a shot that you regularly have to shoot on when you split on pick and roll, getting the, get the paint and then waft it up there. I mean, he's such a good shooter. It's just basically a one-hand jump shot anyway. Now, going baseline, not that you have to do that every time, but using the glass is usually a, you know, a pretty effective tool when you're trying to finish using floaters going baseline. And that's the type of floater that I love the most, getting that ball straight up out of the air, the, the, out of the hand the best that you can. But again, on the handoff, Pushes the defense back before the help comes and getting the ball straight up out of his hand. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many, you know, one foot, two foot. It's usually good to have consistency on your floater of when you shoot it, you know, how you shoot it. But, you know, again, two feet just gets it up there before the help can get there and just an effective shot. He just threw it in there, but again, going baseline. It's usually good if you go in baseline to shoot the ball right outside the paint. When you go in middle, trying to shoot the ball in between the dots and the free throw line is probably the safest bet when shooting the floater. If you're going to go middle from the wings, trying to shoot the ball maybe a foot inside the paint. But those are the spots you should probably shoot it from. And it's like a one-handed jump shot. And obviously being one of the best shooters that ever lived, being able just to throw it in there. But 
you know, he shoots it from the free throw line. I'd rather a jump shot if it's going to be a free throw um, in a layup if it's going to be inside the dots. But, you know, p- pick your poison. See how I'm talking about when you're going, you know, when you're going middle from the wing, shooting it about a foot right inside the paint. It's a hell of a shot right there. I mean, it's a that's a far floater, but again, they force him, you know, give him that baseline. He just gets him back and just gets it up there. Probably could have taken one more dribble, but with the help there, you know, I mean, obviously got to shoot it with a little more distance. I don't know how the hell he made that shot, but again, getting that ball up and getting that straight, it just, the straighter you can get it up, probably the better chance of swishing and, and more chance for bounces. Again, that's that's hell of a range to have on your floater, but especially when you get the get the defender going back like that with the big, you know, Jordan's DeAndre Jordan sort of dropped in the paint. He's coming off. He's got Javale McGee rolling. Get his man behind him. So a floater's a great option there. Yeah, one foot, two foot, doesn't matter. Just push the defense back, and as you can see, that you know Baines is coming off. He's got to get. He's got to break off to Pachulia, trying to keep, you know, trying to keep Steph in front. But you know he knows Irving's going to try to get back in the play. He's running out of real estate, and now he just takes the two foot floater. Floater is an important shot. Coaches either love it or hate it. But it is a shot to try to be a better finisher when you, especially when you're trying to finish over uh, over height. You got to know when to use it. You got to know, you know, how much trajectory you need. You need to be comfortable and confident using the shot. But as you can see, it's a great weapon. I think it just it adds to your arsenal of things that you can do to make yourself a better. Player. I want to thank you for taking the time to you know click on my content and attend the webinar today. Uh, this was really fun. I know I keep saying it for every video that we do, but. You know, just sort of watching the things that he does. I mean, he, he takes so many tough shots, and he's such a bad shot maker just because he's a great shooter. And defenders draped all over him and things like that. I wanted to pick his plays that I could that you could teach to almost any player and just the reads that he makes and why he's successful and, you know, some of the things he does off the ball, his cutting, his transition work, his... You know, being able to set, you know, make a make a play on pick and roll, and then respace the floor. As a player, I think you have to sort of sniff out what players do to, besides that one like great skill that you know only they could possess, but the other things that they do, and the change in the speeds, of how they finish, and how he you know draws contact on his drives, and it just is is a great player. He's a great player to watch and study and and learn a few things from. Hopefully you could pick some things up from him. I mean, there's a, there's so much to learn. I mean, obviously he's shooting, but there's so much more to his game than his shooting. And, and as you saw in the last hour or so, I mean, it's a he's a great player to watch. So hope this helped. And like I said, it was fun. Hopefully we'll do it next Friday. We're gonna answer some more questions after the uh, after I you know after I log off of this. But thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Appreciate you.